This is Jeff Burns of Freelance Art Journey. You can check out my work at jeffburnsart.com. Okay, so in this video, as you continue to watch me work on my original character, this nun, if you could call her that, um, I want to talk about the mental makeup of a freelance artist. And I bring this topic up because in a lot of the past videos that I've done, we talk about commissions, getting commissions, uh, the types of commissions I've come across and uh, jobs and gigs to stay away from. And uh, within the conversations that have been opened as a result of these videos, a lot of people wonder if they want to be bothered with commissions. So you know, I wanted to dig deeper into just the psychological makeup of someone that does commissions and enjoys it, you know, putting themselves through the, the ringer, as it were, and um, the scrutiny of potential clients uh, telling you that uh, what you're doing is not good enough uh, through the just parade of revisions that come and go. And, you know, people that enjoy creating art, well, a lot of times would ask, why do you put yourself through that? Just, you know, to make a few bucks. And, you know, I, and I asked myself that question, why do I continue to do this? And so, you know, as a result of that, I just wanted to kind of dig deeper into, you know, the mental makeup of a freelance artist an illustrator what do I go through what do I have to do to uh, prepare myself to do a uh, commission work and so you know the first thing you have to think about is what type of an artist are you are you someone that uses art as a way to unwind you know you set up your easel you pull your paints out and this is your way of relaxing and of just getting in touch with your feelings, your emotions, your inner self, you know, and if that is like kind of your Zen place, creating art, then, you know, commissions kind of puts you in a different space. It's a different headspace. And so it can be challenging to shift from doing something because you enjoy it to doing something because you have to and because someone's paid you to do it. And so, you know, for me, even though I love creating art and I create art for myself as well as for clients, there's a shift that has to occur. And so when I do commission work, I'm in a different mode where I am really concerned with what they're doing, with their project, with the outcome of it. I want it to succeed. A big part of that is the type of projects that I take on. I really have to be able to identify with it, like it, believe in it, so that I can um, really get on board with what they're trying to accomplish. So that's a big part of what motivates me to do the work. If it is a, a children's book and the subject matter is important and it's teaching kids something that they need, then that's an easy one to get on board with. So you have to ask yourself, you know, what your motivation is with art in general. Um, can you look at the work of someone that someone else needs and, and tell yourself that this is important to you as well? Can you make it important to you? Can you say, 
you know, I really want to see that thing succeed. You know, for me, I I can make the shift, obviously, depending on what it's about, what what the project is, what they need. Um, and of course, money is and always will be a big motivator. So, you know, as long as they are willing to pay uh, my rates, then that's obviously another motivator that uh, if they put money down, then I'm going to deliver. Um, and so, you know, these are things that make me want to do the work can continue to do the work. Now, this character actually was born out of my desire. My original desire was to build my portfolio up with pieces that really inspired me because I feel like if I have a portfolio full of commission work that my heart wasn't in, then it would show in the work. And so when you look at my portfolio, you see probably 60 to 70 percent of it is my own personal work that I did on my own, that I wanted to do, that excited me, things that motivated me. And so, you know, it comes through in the work. It really does. And a lot of times people commission me to do their projects based on what I've done for myself. This piece, it started off as a series of fictitious comic book covers that I was going to populate my portfolio with. So this character was born out of that desire. And in the process of creating the first cover, I kind of came up with a backstory and a lore and one thing led to another and I, I started to question, should I actually turn this into my own comic, a graphic novel, something that I, you know, cause I've, I've always threatened to, to write a comic. And so this is kind of my foray into that arena. Uh, hopefully you will see her in action. And so I thank you for listening and watching and stay tuned for another episode coming soon.